blue, uh, uh -huh. how does he look and what do you think? He looked better. I'll be honest with you. About 12 noon today, I didn't think there was any chance he was going to play. Um, after watching him out there today, I thought he did a good job. You know, I just walked off with him. He said he feels feels good. Um, thing you worry about is just he hasn't practiced in two weeks. And uh, this ain't somebody that you want to just throw out there when you haven't practiced in two weeks. And, and uh, there's a lot that we've added offensively. He's been in meetings. He knows it, but he hasn't repped some of this stuff that we've been doing. So that's a little bit of a concern, just the middle part of it. But physically, he said he felt good. We'll see how he is tomorrow. But, you know, if he can go, uh, obviously Trey's going to get the majority of the work uh, uh, regardless. And then if Trey can't – or if uh, – JC can't go, then uh, Chris Mangus will be our second guy and, and be getting a lot of work also. Can Mangus be a guy who, who takes a, an offensive series, or is he a guy that comes in for a play or two? No, I think he's going to have to take a series. Um, you know, I don't think it's realistic against these guys or in any game for to ask Trey Edmonds to take the entire game. Now, we'll have packages where Mangus will have to get in the game or Mangus and whoever, maybe two tailbacks, three tailbacks, whatever. They're all in the game at the same time. I mean, who knows uh, what we do. But there will be times where we'll – you know, note and be specific that Mangus has got to be in there on that particular play. And then there's also going to be times if, if JC can't go where I say, hey, Chris, you've got this series just to give Trey a blow. I mean, we're not going to throw him out there for 70 plays if we're fortunate enough to have that many. <laughs> it seems like we've been talking about Trey for so long, it's easier to forget that he's never played in a game. Right. Do you worry at all about the you know first time on that kind of stage? A little bit. Anything? You worry about a first game to begin with. You worry about who they're playing. You worry about the atmosphere that's going to be down there in Atlanta. JC and I were just talking about that, you know, walking off the field that you got, whether it's Chris Mangus, Trey Edmonds, or or uh, Jerome Wright, who would be our third guy if, if, if JC can't play. you got three guys that have never even dressed for a game, much less played. Uh, so that's a concern, certainly. But uh, Trey's a competitor. Trey's made of the right stuff. Uh, you know he's excited. I don't worry about him. You know too much from that standpoint. But but anytime first games are always tough. Uh, whether it's a senior that's that that's that's at your position, or whether it's a rich or freshman like we have now. Does this what's going on right now affect how much you could potentially use those guys in the passing game, just in terms of injuries and, and youth and that sort of um, stuff? Not really. Uh, you know, it's tough because we're asking both those guys to, to do a lot, Trey and Chris both, and then Sam Rogers too. I mean, Sam's a guy that, that could easily – I got no problem with Sam lined up a tailback. I mean, he knows it. So you're trying to cross-train a lot of different guys. We're doing a lot offensively, and you're having to – normally you could say, okay, Chris, focus in on this. You know, let's say we got – Certain plays you can focus in on this, but now you got to know this and you got to know that, you know, in case something happened to happen to Trey or you're in there. So, uh, uh, pass game wise, it's it's stuff that we've been doing, so they've heard it, they've been hearing it since spring practice for the most part. But, but um, you know, you, it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of coaching going on out there today, you know, for guys doing some different things than they've done before. What to you is the thing that sticks out the most about this Alabama defense? What what's the most? Uh, is there a, a particular size thing? size jumps out at you? I mean. Uh, Jack Tyler is a heck of a football player, but you know Jack Tyler is not 240 pounds like their two inside linebackers are that are six foot two, six foot three. You know, so you, it, it's just they're really well coached. They're really good fundamentally. I mean, everybody talks about all kind of players they have, but they're really, really just fundamentally sound. I mean, you see them getting off blocks. They don't stay blocked. They uh, uh, they tackle well. You don't see them missing tackles. I mean, they're really good. But they're really good fundamentally, so that jumps out at you. And then just the size of it. Uh, you know, we've been uh, with Sam Rogers, for example, at fullback for an entire preseason. If we're running base plays with him, whether we're running the ISO or we're running the power, you know, he's been blocking guys, and he matches up well, pretty with you know, pretty much with physically. He's blocking Josh Tremble or Derek Donardo if we're running the power. He's blocking uh, Chase Williams or Dion if he's running if we're running some sort of ISO. Now all of a sudden you're blocking. Adrian Hubbard on the power, who weighs 260 pounds, or you're blocking uh, uh, C.J. Mosley and those guys on the inside that outweigh you. So that's a concern, probably the, the biggest thing that stands out. It's a concern, and then that's the thing that stands out at you. I'm sorry.